Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. This time we're discussing something a little different. A long gun, which I don't usually do because I don't really have room. But nonetheless, here we are. Now, a few years back, there was a fashion to buy a brand new Ruger 1022 and remove the perfectly good barrel and replace it with something else which meant that there were quite a lot of 1022 barrels out there. And I saw one at the uh, local gun shop for 15 bucks and I snagged it, figuring 22 caliber rifled barrel is not going to go to waste. And I cut part of it off for another project and I was left with a Ruger 1022 barrel cut off in front of the chamber. Well, behind the chamber, depending on how you look at it, um, with, you know, the standard loop around the barrel to hold a front sight. And after some time, I came across a front sight and rear sight for a Ruger 1022 because apparently the people who had the barrels replaced didn't need those either. And I thought I should make a carbine because there was still over 16 inches of barrel left. So why not? And I decided to make a rolling block, which I proceeded to do. YouTube is not big on how-to videos, so I'm sorry, but there's not going to be any of that. Also, it's years too late. But this is the gun in question. And this is a single-shot rolling block carbine with quilted maple for the furniture and brass for the receiver because... I don't have a functional milling machine and I can't milling even brass on my drill press is stretching it, but I managed it and came up with this. And we're going to go to the tabletop and have a look at parts of it at a time since it's too long for my tabletop. Let's do that now. So the carbine that resulted from my efforts has a 16 and a quarter inch barrel is 33 and a half inches overall length and weighs right about four pounds. And we'll unload and show clear. To do that, this is a 19th century style of rifle. It is not meet modern standards of safety. <laughs> you fully cock the hammer, rotate the breech block back, and you can see there is no bullet in the hole. To fire it, you simply close the breech block and pull the trigger. Or if you don't want to fire it immediately, you release the trigger and then get your finger away from it so that it will catch at the safety notch. And as you can see, it's not pushing the firing pin in. Now, if it were to fall from a height and somehow miraculously land directly on the hammer, it would probably break and it would go off. That really seems vanishingly unlikely. So, uh, the rear sight is, oh, there we go. It's a standard Ruger 1022 sight that flips up and down. The front sight is a standard Ruger front sight with a little gold dot, which uh, gives a pretty nice little sight picture. The wood is quilted maple. And as you can see, it's very attractive finished with I don't even know how many coats of lacquer. So, everybody's favorite, screwdriver porn. Let's have a look at what's happening inside. To do this, we undo these two large screws. And the side plate falls off the other side. Because, of course, I was learning as I went, and I didn't get some of the bits exactly right the first time. So I had to put a side plate on the back. And, of course, you can't see the screwdriver porn because my arms are in the way. All right. So the side plate comes off, and you can see everything going on, and there ain't much. Um... There is a flat spring I made out of 5160 spring steel that is held with a screw right here. 
and there is another flat spring inset into the main body of the receiver. And then you have the trigger, which incorporates the sear, the hammer, and the breech block. So when you cock the gun fully, the sear engages the hammer here. You can rotate the breech block back and the flat spring makes it want to stay in place. And then when you are ready to fire, the breech is not locked at the time you pull the trigger. When you pull the trigger, the breech is locked by this projection on the hammer because now it can't rotate down because the hammer is in the way. So very simple mechanism. Um, the internal parts are 5160 spring steel and the block is mild steel because let's face it, 22 long rifle or 22 short doesn't put a whole lot of strain on it. And reassembly is just the reverse. And <clears throat> I pulled this out the other day thinking that I would have to do a lot of work to it to make it presentable for this video, but I really didn't have much to do except touching up the bluing. And the forestock is retained by this screw, which secures the wood. Come on. I used an unnecessarily long screw for this. Come on. There we go. And there is a brass block, silver soldered to the bottom of the barrel, which accepts the screw that holds the forestock in place. And the inside of the forestock is relieved for that block. Let's get this back together real quick. And of course, it's quite a pleasant rifle to fire because it's very lightweight. And the trigger pull is decent with no over travel. <laughs> and um, so it breaks, it's not light, but it breaks very, very cleanly. Uh, the stock at the rear is secured by a screw, which passes through from the top and engages threads at the bottom. So it's very simple. And the trigger guard is just held in place by a single screw. And it just stays in place at the back because, well, the back light's there. On this plate, because my machining ability is so rudimentary, I had to silver solder this spacer plate to uh, make up the difference. But it works, and it works very well. And it's kind of fun. Um, to shoot. It's not, <laughs> you're never going to have a decent rate of fire with it, but it'll shoot 22 long, long rifle shorts, CB caps, and um, all manner of other things. Makes it quite versatile. And it is, I haven't shot it at any significant range, but at 25 yards, it's quite accurate enough. In fact, it, it's limited by my ability with the iron sights, not by the rifle, I am quite sure. But firing standing unsupported offhand, uh, pretty much all the bullet holes are touching at 25 yards. So, all back together. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives says that you are allowed to make for your own use any firearm that you are legally entitled to possess. They view this as a function of your Second Amendment rights. If you have the right to be armed, what difference if you make your own? Um, many states disagree with this and for some strange reason are allowed to. Um, California, New Jersey, and several other states do not allow you to make firearms for your own use. And Washington State is effectively prohibiting the practice very soon. So I'm glad I made this while I had the chance. It's, um, I think it's a pretty little rifle. It's potentially useful as well. I mean, it's fun for plinking, but um, I might do some small game hunting with it this year. That would be fun. 
And um, it was fun, it was challenging, and I'm just really glad I did it while I still had the legal right to do so. Anyway, um, if you like the video, please click like. It really does help the channel. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you really want to help, consider clicking the link below in the description and supporting me on Patreon. I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.